This is Radar from the Radar Taint Blog coming at you with another edition of MLB Observations, the first batch of postseason. They've added the wild card round to being more than just one elimination game. And before it was the three division winner, and it would be the division winner with the best record would face the winner of the wild card in those one game playoffs, or there'd just be one wild card. Now there are multiple wild cards as. You know, the Rangers played the Rays, the Blue Jays played the Twins, and Arizona played the Brewers, and Miami played the Phillies. Because even though, you know, the Twins and Brewers were their, their division, they were the weaker ones, so that's why they have to play the wild card. So Texas still did that whole Simeon Seager one and two combination, which I'd have, I have a problem with, but they won. But the issue is, I don't understand why Robbie Grossman is batting third. All season long, it's been Nathaniel Lowe in the three spot, and sometimes Josh Young. I don't get this Lottie Tavares dude who's inconsistent. He batted before Josh Young, so I'm a little bit confused by that. Young was all the way eighth. You know, the whole point of having Lowe and Garcia and either Garver or Hyman the catcher, and Young is that you got a great heart of the lineup. Young's batting all the way eighth. That's not a heart of the lineup. The Tampa Bay Rays, they couldn't score, and I'm sorry they've had injuries this year. But that's what happens when you cut Francisco Mejia, who was at one point the number one offensive catching prospect to all of baseball. It also doesn't help when you're starting to take a Mason Brandon Lau was hurt. Your starting shortstop could potentially be going to prison and Wander Franco. So you're just like, okay. And they had all these cluster injuries on the rotation in the bullpen. So Eflin and Glasnow were obviously going to start no matter what in a playoff series. But it would have been nice if they had, a, you know, Shane McClellahan. Point is... I don't understand it still why Yanni Diaz, who can drive in, in my opinion, drive in 100 runs because he's, he's a good run producer, and Randy Rosarena, their best all-around hitter, why are they batting one and two? You're like, well, maybe they don't want to bat Manuel Margot or Jose Series in the one spot, or they don't want to put rookie Curtis Mead at the top, or Taylor Walls, who can't hit in the leadoff spot. Okay, but when you put your best two run producers, one and two, and they say they have a bad series, that would be there's two outs, and guess who comes up to bat third? Harold Ramirez, who we've been over this all season long, is not a DH or a third hitter. He's a backup outfielder or a platoon outfielder his whole entire career. That's why their lineup was struggling, because you kids can't rely on Paredes, who had a career year RBI-wide. Rookies Curtis Mead, glove first Taylor Wall. Manuel Margot, who's always been inconsistent. Jose Siri, who strikes out a lot. Josh Lau. I'm wondering where Luke Rayleigh was. Is he injured? Like, that guy should have been starting at DH more than anyone else. I, I just don't get it. Toronto. Similar thing. If George Springer and Brandon Belt are batting one and two and they have a bad series and they don't score enough and you think that Bo Bichette and Kevin Biggio need to be in the middle of your lineup, there, there's something wrong with that. There really is. Brandon Belt is a middle lineup hitter when he was in San Francisco. He's not the same player he was. That's why I bat him sixth or seventh. I would not bat him th third or fourth. George Springer, for a good chunk of the season, had batted somewhere between three and five. But they played around with it, moved him back to the leadoff spot. At least he's playing right field he belongs. But imagine a lineup that is Boba Shett at the top. And they've done this a good chunk of the year with Merrifield at the top. I, I, I love Kevin Biggio, but Whit Merrifield made the all-star team this year. He was having a great season. He should have been starting all these playoff games. Like, not coming in later to play the outfield, which he's not. Or Biggio moving the outfield, and he comes in to play second base or something like that. Like, it should have been that Whit Merrifield started the playoff games, him and Bo at the top. So, in the middle of your lineup is Vladimir Guerrero, George Springer, Brandon Bell, Matt Chapman, and Dalton Varsho. But they put a Dalton Varsho ninth and Matt Chapman eighth and they had Kevin Kiermaier seventh and some of these things you're just like what are you doing because Alondra Kirk and the back and the Thurston catcher Heineman yeah they're good but I don't want them batting fifth or sixth like that's the whole point of having Springer and Chapman and Varsho you got these guys in different ways of acqu acquisitions and Brandon Belt to support Vladimir Guerrero in this lineup like it just makes no sense and again, throwing Varsho in center field when he's not a center fielder. And I said Biggio and Whit Merrifield playing the outfields is stupid. Another thing they did was that probably come back to haunt them is John Schneider took Jose Barrios, the former Twins pitcher, out after three innings at 40-something pitches to put Kikuchi, 
who's having who's having a rebound season, the starting pitcher as reliever, and and it just the Twins just shut them down because Sonny Gray pitched like an all star, and Pablo Lopez pitched in game one, and you're just like, okay, the Blue Jays couldn't score off their two best pitchers because of the way the lineup is. Why don't you keep Barrios in and have him go five or six innings and keep you in the game? Like I, I don't get it. Twins. Yeah, they scored a bunch of runs in the first two games, but I still don't understand Polanco. We've been over this. It's the perfect five hitter. He's not a top of your lineup hitter, and I'm, I know they're like they want to play Edward Julian, but like you could have played Kyle Lewis or at third base. I know I'm saying DHing was a bad move, but he's not a DH. He's a natural born shortstop, and yes, he had a home run in the playoffs and he came up clutch, but he's not a three hitter. This is not going to work. In the next round, it's really not because the Astros are not. Our Astros are going to be. Oh, you're going to put Kyle Lewis third. Well, we won't pitch to him, and we'll pitch to some, and we'll pitch to someone else. Okay, Kyle Farmer, the natural born catcher. Glad they put him at third base late in the game. They put Solano again at first base when he's not at first base from late in the game. I do like they start Alex Killerov, better bat. Correa, you're paying him all this money. He should be three, four, and five. Putting him all the way six. Yes, he came with a clutch hit in the game too. But like, imagine if. You got Julian and Royce Lewis at the top, and they got on base. And you come up, and you got Correa, Kepler, and Polanco, and Killeroff. Like, that's really hard to beat that lineup. Okay, and then Willie Castro playing the outfield is not an outfielder. I do like Kepler fourth. At least that made some sense there, and Julian leading off. But again, Polanco playing third base, that's, that's who you DH. You DH Polanco. And you play Julian and Lewis in the infield, and that's a much better infield because Polanco's never been a great defensive shortstop to begin with, let alone is he going to be good at third base. Arizona, the Corbin Carroll, Cattell Marte getting on base one and two has been perfect. A little bit skeptical about the fan third when you got Ewer Guriel, I mean, uh, Lourdes Guriel made the all team, and for a while, they weren't playing this guy. I don't know what's going on. They were doing the whole Jake McCarthy playing right field and, and Corbin Carroll playing left field and Thomas in center field. So Guriel wasn't around. And the whole point of giving Longoria was because he's supposed to be a good third baseman. But they played a lot of Jace Peterson towards the stretch. So at least Longoria played in these games. But batting eighth is way too low for the veteran. Tommy Pham, I'm not saying he shouldn't bat somewhere important. But sixth or seventh maybe. And Alec Thomas, I'm glad he wasn't batting fifth. He, you know, he hit a home run. I'm happy for the Chicago native guy. But seventh way too high for a glove first. He should be at the bottom with the catcher. That's what it should be. Brewers. They took a 2-0 lead yesterday and lost, and they lost game one as well. And I'm just like, I think one of your biggest mistakes is Yelich Contreras being at the top of the lineup. Because if they both have a bad game, at least now Santana and Canna are 3-4. and four, But you're relying on rookie South Freelift at the 5 spot and Adamas to bat 6. Like, those are not the guys that I want to come up and drive in runs or hit home runs at this point. No, that's why you got, you traded for Contreras. That's why you have Yelich. That's where it makes no sense there. And they and it says scoring only two runs and barely scoring the other game. That's what happens when you put your sluggers at the top and you put non-sluggers between five and seven. Miami, at least the Ryan's not batting third. So first they'll take it with the whole solar second. Dumb. You know it's all season. He can hit a solo home run. That's it. Like it doesn't really help you. Josh Bell batting third makes a lot of sense. The whole Jazz just isn't playing center field and batting fourth all season. It doesn't make sense. Because he's not a power hitter. He's not a great center fielder. That's how he got him hurt. At least they bumped Cruz and Sanchez down to six and seven instead of what they were doing, which was like four and five or five and six because at least Jake Berger was batting fifth. Wendell got this, came in and played shortstop, but at least Birdie started shortstop and they moved him to the outfield. Phillies, the whole Kyle Schwarber, they exploded for like seven runs yesterday. Fine. whoop de doo at least Stott went from 5th to 7th, and Trey Turner was still batting 2nd, and Harper still playing 1st base. But in a perfect world, you want Bryce Harper 3rd, and you want his cleanup hitter to either be Schwerber, Castellanos, or JT Remuto, then Alec Bohm. Bohm batting 3rd, fine. But for the most part, I want Harper. You want Harper 3rd, because he's a number 3 hitter. And then you got Sluggers, Kyle Schwerber, Nicky Castellano, offensive catcher JT Remuto, and, and Alec Bohm. Really hard to top that, and you get Stott and Turner at the top. And then whoever's playing center field, that's who's playing center field. Now, Schwerber DH in a few of these games, which was good, because then they played Pache or Rojas in the outfield, and that makes sense. I will admit this now. I predicted that the Rays would win because 
I mean, the Rangers would win because I knew that the Rays were depleted and that that because they were depleted, that the Rangers, who have a really, really good offense, would show up. And their offense showed up, you know, specifically yesterday. You know, it hurt me to say this because I won Tampa Bay this year, but that's what I thought. And I went with my, I went with my, my heart. I hate the Minnesota Twins as a White Sox fan, so I went with the Blue Jays because I thought, you know, between Kevin Gosman and Jose Perillo, they could pitch to a pitcher's duel with the likes of Sonny Gray and Pablo Lopez. But the way that I know, the Blue Jays just could not score enough runs to keep up with the Twins, who has always had a good lineup. And I went Brewers over D-backs, more of a, with my heart, because I kind of like the Brewers, but also I thought Corbin Burns giving up four runs, I did not see that happening. I didn't see Freddie Peralta, you know, you know, losing in a game where basically they, the Diamondbacks came back and they, uh, and they, you know, scored a bunch more runs, take the lead. Like, I didn't see that coming. I'm now thinking, second-guessing Craig Council's move of not starting Brandon Woodruff, who was the ace before Corbin Burns won the Cy Young, okay? And the three of them have three all-star, you know, they have three all-star starting pitchers, and you have to make a tough decision of who you want to go with, okay? Now, obviously, it's not like the Twins put up so many runs. They scored only five runs because it's the postseason. But what I was getting at with the Brewers is, like, Freddie Peralta got the loss because it it, it just seemed like the decision of not to start Brandon Woodruff and the fact that he gave up four run, he gave up three runs in the sixth inning, and then the Uribe came in and imploded. It's just like I'm thinking, like maybe he started Brandon Woodruff, or you took him out, you took him out earlier before you got into all that trouble. I know you've been like, well, take him out after four innings. That's kind of, I mean, yeah, you take him out after five innings, so that when it came to the sixth inning where he couldn't get out of it. That would have made the most sense. It really would have. So I got wrong about that. Diamondbacks took a gamble with this Fiat Fat dude starting in game one. It turned out to work in their favor to go with their ace Zach Allen in game two so that when the next series starts, Merrill Kelly's pitching at game one. That's a good strategy. But after those two, and maybe Fat, like this rotation, I was saying getting rid of Davies, I don't get it. I still understand why they DFA'd him like towards the end of the season. They could have used this guy. So, but... And then Phillies, I knew the Phillies that it didn't matter to me who was starting between the likes of Nola and Wheeler and Tejon Walker, like they and Ranger Suarez, because they have they have a good rotation, and that's kind of what helped them get in there in the first place. So Nola pitched in game two, and obviously Zach Wheeler pitched in game one. So what I'm looking at is like, okay. They line this up with a Tayshaun Walker and maybe Ranger Suarez or Lorenzen if he's on the bullpen is pitching to start the series, and those guys can finish it. So I knew that the Phillies pitching would be way better off than the Marlins because they shut their best pitcher, Sandy Alcantara, down for the season, and Lazardo's a nice young pitcher, but it just it looked like that Lazardo wasn't ready, and of course he got the loss because the Phillies scored way more, and then... Obviously, this Braxton Garrett dude, or his name is, was horrible. I My real question is, Skip Schumacher, Johnny Cueto's won a World Series, okay? He's pitched in postseason. Why didn't you think, maybe we'll start him in game two, and if we need to do a two-starter game just to get us to game three, maybe you go with Garrett? I don't know. Like, I'm just not understanding the strategy there. And then I looked at the fact that I've been saying the Marlins lineup has been flawed all season with Soler and Bell getting a lot of at-bats in the one and two spot putting Jazz Chisholm in the middle of the lineup with Cruz and Sanchez. Like, no, Miami Marlins' best lineup is Jazz and Luis Arias at the top. And, of course, Soler, Josh Bell, and Jake Berger, and Avi Garcia if he's healthy. Like, that's the lineup. So I was looking at, like, the Marlins don't have enough starting pitching, and their lineup is flawed. So I'm like, you know what? I knew the Phillies would win. So I was right about that. So at least I got half of them right. And when it comes to the next round, that's going to be tricky because I can't. I want the Twins to lose, but everyone wants the Astros to lose also, but I can't have both teams lose. 
And I don't like the Phillies or all the Braves being a Mets fan. But again, I got to pick someone. And the Diamondbacks are a good story. But I don't know how they're going to stack up against LA's stacked offense. Pitching-wise, no May, no Goslin, no Bueller, no Uria. It's my guy Lance Lynn, who I don't know if I can trust. I really don't know if I can trust him. And a bunch of rookie starters for the Dodgers. So, like, that's the question there. The Braves and the Phillies is going to be a good series because they're both good teams. I hope the Astros just make quick work of the Twins. And the Rangers prove that the decision of Avaldi and Montgomery to start is a good idea. I don't know if they're going to start those guys in any of the first two games. That it's going to look like Jonathan Gray or Dane Dunning. I don't know if Andrew Heaney or Martin Perez are going to start. But the Orioles also have got themselves rotation questions because the Flaherty's in the bullpen what was one of trading for him that's my real question when because I loved my guy Dean Kramer I trust Jonathan Means I just thought Flaherty would be a good game three starter so your game four starter could be rookie Grace Rodriguez Kyle Bradish who's had a good season or old man Gibson you can go either one of those guys but again thanks for listening to the wild card round of the 2023 playoffs from the red table I'm radar see you guys next time